So everybody loves a good game show. They're fun and exhilarating because we get to see regular people win some pretty extraordinary stuff. But you pretty much only know about the normal ones. For example, like The Price is Right, which has been running for over 60 years. But uh, not every game show in the world is based off of, you know, simple and fun things like spinning a wheel or even safe things. <laughs> no. No, they're not. No, in fact, there have been some game shows that are so outrageous in not only what they do to the contestants, but also what they make the contestants do that they're either going to make you gasp, cringe, or just straight up gag. So today, I'm going to tell you about the most outrageous game shows that have ever aired. And seriously, you're going to want to prepare yourself for this one. It's, it's freaky. Here are the 10 craziest game shows of all time. Number one is Human Tetris. Let's start off with a game that mixes one of the greatest old arcade classics of all time with a strangely ridiculous amount of flexibility and the requirement to avoid walls that are quickly moving towards you. That sounds safe! Also known as Brain Wall or Hole in the Wall, this game originated in Japan and involves contestants wearing helmets, elbow pads, and knee pads, and I'm going to explain why. See, the contestants are required to desperately contort their bodies just so they can fit through the Tetris-shaped piece holes in the styrofoam in the walls that are moving towards them. So either you pull a hammy or you're subjected to a claustrophobic nightmare. That sounds like something I'd like to subject myself to. No? Now this game might sound strange to many of you, and trust me, it does me as well, but it's now quite common pretty much all over the world. Personally, I'm not flexible and I would never try this game because what's the point of winning a car when you broke your back in the process of trying to win it? Yeah, you see my friends, that's called logic. More of these contestants should use it. Number two is Distraction. Well, the name of the game pretty much says it all in this one. Released in the United Kingdom in October of 2003, this game show was hosted by British comedian Jimmy Carr and only ran for one series and it'll make sense as to why in just a minute. Yeah, that one series is all that was needed to nab a spot on this list. The object of the game was to answer more trivia questions than the other players, which seems harmless, except that each new round introduced a distraction. But uh, these distractions either made the contestant uncomfortable or actually delivered real pain so that the contestant would be you know, distracted. These distractions included nudists running around, electric shocks, and tattoo needles. And the thing is, the contestants never knew when the distraction was going to happen. Sometimes they occurred during the round, and sometimes they were activated when a contestant thought that they had the right answer. Either way, it created a pretty successful concept that was both hilarious and bizarre, except that it was cancelled because you can't cause people real pain. But I'm gonna be completely honest, you offer me a Lamborghini and feel free to hook up whatever you want to me. Jumper cables whatever. Just shock, shock, shock. Lambo, Lambo, Lambo. That's it. Number three is the marshmallow game. See, some people think that marshmallows are best for, you know, campfires and s'mores, but the Japanese think differently. This game originated in Japan and is yet another one to find its way into Western culture. In fact, it was actually featured on the Ellen DeGeneres show. It's actually pretty simple. An elastic ties the contestant's head to a wall behind them and then they basically try to stretch forward without any use of their hands until they successfully consume a marshmallow. <laughs> this is an incredibly silly game and oh so awesome in so many ways. I mean, not only do you get to eat a marshmallow, but you also get to entertain everyone who watches you by, you know, contorting your face into ridiculous expressions. I just got the marshmallow. Holy God, you're welcome for that visual. Number four is Tore. And on to the dangerous one. Another game invented in Japan. This is basically the real life version of the games that were played in the Saw films. Yeah. Just like many simpler trivia shows, the game requires you to answer trivia questions. However, unlike those programs, for every answer a player gets wrong, they're wrapped up a little bit more and a little bit more until they resemble a mummy. Then, if you get enough wrong and the wrapping reaches your head, they quickly stuff you into a sarcophagus. Yay for claustrophobia! The game also gets stranger from there, but that's pretty much the most terrifying part. All the Japanese fear entertainment and comedy. It all just gets mixed in together into a weird entertainment stew. Gotta love it. Number five is El Gran Juego de la Oca. This game is basically just a giant 63 square board game in which the contestants are the pieces. El Gran Fuego de la Oca was originally created in Italy and then ran off and on between 1993 and 1998 out of Madrid, Spain. It translates to, and this is my favorite, the game of the goose. 
The game involves rolling electric die and then moving that many spaces while you try to land on the 63rd space and thus win the game. However, before the 63rd space, there's a challenge that has to be overcome or a change that occurs in the game. <laughs> How devious. What kind of challenges? Well, for example, on some spaces, gross foods would need to be consumed at a fictional Chinese restaurant. Others require the player to mud wrestle a professional wrestler, and some involved being shaved bald or waxed. Ooh, sign me up for this one. I've already completed one of the challenges. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, my head's so cold. Number six is AK Bingo. A variety series that knows how to push the boundaries of entertainment, AK Bingo is hosted by Japanese comedy duo Owari. Owari, which translates into bad boys, consists of spectacularly bizarre contests which occur between contestants. They involve quizzes, puzzle solving, and physical feats that are just out there. As if trying to be kind of a fear factor on steroids, the game requires contestants to eat really gross delicacies as well as play a very strange form of dodgeball that really doesn't have any rules. One competition actually has two players comparing the strength of their lungs by blowing into either side of a long, clear plastic tube and trying to get a dead insect into the other opponent's mouth. <coughs> nope, I, I don't wanna talk about this anymore. I'm not playing this game. Huh. Number seven is Tutti Frutti. Originally developed in Italy and called Colpo Grasso or Big Score, Tutti Frutti premiered in Germany in January of 1990 and ran for a total of 140 episodes. This bizarre and very controversial game show caused quite a stir, drawing outrage from viewers who weren't expecting the program to have the level of, well, nudity and sexuality that it did. Now the game was pretty innovative at the time technologically, however, when the objective of the game is to get as many points from guessing correct answers as you can so that you can remove an equal number of clothing articles from a stripper, things are, uh, <clears throat> yeah, a little bit controversial. I've never seen this game. Are, are, are replays available online? Just, I'm asking for a friend. Number eight is Don't Forget Your Toothbrush. On air for only two seasons between 1994 and 1995, don't Forget Your Toothbrush originated in the United Kingdom, but over the next six years, it was recreated in 14 other countries. So I think it's pretty safe to say that it was popular. What was unique about this game is that every member of the studio audience who attended tapings of the show were instructed that they had to bring with them their passport and a packed bag. Additionally, they had to be certain that they had the next week off of work. Why so much preparation? Well, because contestants were picked randomly from the audience, and instead of their prizes being awarded weeks or even months later, they actually receive their prize, always a vacation, immediately. Like, right now. So in other words, if you won a trip to Jamaica, you were on a plane that night. The producers felt that part of the fun of the show was the insanity that, at the drop of a hat, your plans just changed. That is absolutely insane and a lot of fun, but I gotta be honest, that is also a huge gamble. Like, if I was one of the people in the audience that did not get picked, which the majority don't, you just took the next week off and you're sitting at home just just making making sad faces cuz you're at home and not in Jamaica. Number 9 is the intercept. This game originated in Russia. All the normal stuff comes out of Russia. From the country that brought us the most dangerous form of roulette comes one of the most controversial and craziest games that you could possibly play. Called The Intercept, this game show takes real people and offers a wonderful grand prize of a new car. Well, that's not so crazy, Matt. How do we win the car? I'm glad you asked. You have to steal it. Seriously, you, you have to steal it. Not only that, you have only 35 minutes to steal the car and manage to escape the real police officers who are trying to catch you. Ah, but that's not so bad. If I don't win, I don't win. <laughs> nah, it does not work like that because if you are caught, you are for real arrested. Incredibly, despite the fact that most contestants do lose the game and thus find themselves in custody, people still sign up to play. Only a few people have ever actually won the car and that's quite the risk to take. In Soviet Russia, game show play you. Duh. 
And number 10, Candy or Not Candy. I find the title of this game disturbing. Well, we can't close out this list without looking at a game show that's designed for teething infants, but it's actually played by confused adults. That's right, it's the show that answers the question, what would it be like to eat my bedroom door handle? <laughs> what? It's Candy or Not Candy. I don't like to guess what goes in my mouth. This game consists of cakes and chocolates that are made to mimic everyday objects. Contestants, most of them Japanese celebrities, big surprise, must determine which items are what they appear to be and which ones are simply confectionery clones. But how do they do this? Well, they have gotta do it by immediately trying to eat the item. That's bad for your teeth. As you could imagine, this results in some pretty ridiculous moments. You know, of people eating things that they shouldn't be putting in their mouth. Mmm, fire poker. <sighs> Speaking of games, I want to give a big thanks to my friends at PokerStars for sponsoring this video. They've just launched the Spin and Go Cristiano Ronaldo edition. It's a really fun game that's completely free to download and play. And you can win real prizes like a supercar worth up to $450,000 in value. It's a fast, easy game of poker that, unlike the games on this list, makes a lot more sense. So be sure to click the link in the description to check it out. Again, it's free to download and play. I really think you guys are going to enjoy it, so give it a try. It's a lot of fun, and like I said, you can win some really cool stuff. So click the links in the description below and have some fun. If you guys enjoyed this video or even got a couple giggles, be sure to press that red subscribe button because I upload every Tuesday and Saturday. And be sure to add me to the Twitters, the Snapchats, and the Instagrams because I have all kinds of social media fun on there, baby. I'll see you next video. Ooh. Oh!